Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Game Review number 99. Today we have Elethalian versus Cocoon. So, some very strange names, but uh, interesting nonetheless. It's a 6Q versus 7Q, so let's see how it goes. Alright, so white's playing. Oops. Black goes in, and white pincers. So, I think this is nothing but a trick move, but let's see what it does. Okay, okay. Because I wanted to assume that white knew it, but I'm not sure he does. So I think black should have party here and here, and I think this would be good for black. <clears throat> that is because black has about uh, black has two eyes in the corner, and white has two weak groups. And black's also developing a little bit of thickness. And uh, if white tries to do something like this, black can easily live. So now that uh, black can live here and. Black can live with this push, so black can attack uh, like this, or uh, maybe a little further away like this, live. Or if white tries to do this, it can do it. Uh, so I think white has too many weaknesses, therefore I think this result's good for white. Now, what would I say instead? Well, this is a trick move, right? Which means there's likely a trick, and if you don't trick black, it's probably going to be good for black. Uh, I think this is a trick move anyway. I don't know this one very well. Normally, you see this move, uh, this move, or this move, or Tanuki. In this case, I would probably go for this one because this is also higher. Therefore, the result you could expect is something like this. Uh, and normally, you want to extend, and that way, when black comes in, perhaps you can aim at get a very, very large center, maybe. I think it's probably still good for black. Uh, and black would probably go here. In other words, I don't, uh, I don't know how to work with Q5. I think I don't know how to do this, guys. I don't know this opening. So uh, I think if you're gonna play it, then probably you should have some type of planner study it. Um, so normally when you have the opening or when you're playing an opening, you study Josekis that are played in that opening and maybe look at some pro games, see how they play it. But the fact is I haven't seen this one and like I don't see this one very often. It's very, very rare that I see this one. So I haven't actually studied it in depth because it almost never comes up and you can't study everything. So I don't know what to do. And if white played it, then I think it's up to white to know how to deal with it. As black, uh, I, black played very naturally. So I don't think black did anything wrong. Um, now, he went here. I think this is too soon because white can threaten to live in Sente, and now black's not alive, and white gets an eye. So this Atari is very important. It's the determination of who's going to get the eye in the corner. Uh, whoever gets it gets the eye in the corner, so I think it was bad for black to play this. White did play here, so both players ignoring that Atari. Black, you want to jump uh, because you don't want to be super aggressive here, so of course you want an Atari. Right? Of course Atari first. But locally here, you want the jump, and if white plays here, you can simply this way, and if white goes, then you, uh, you don't care about white getting one eye. It's not that big of a deal. It's more important to be light and quick and live quickly than it is to get heavy. Because here you're going to get heavy, and you see that white's attacking you very severely. This is kind of a nice white move if it works. It does work. If it works, this is a nice move. Uh, but you can see, see that black's under a lot of pressure, so don't make yourself heavy when you don't need to. Oh, white. I was expecting this. Um, yeah, this is what I was expecting. Something like this, but it may be black and play. Mm. Hard to say. I'm going to take liberty. Hard to say. This is difficult to read. Difficult to read. No, no, and I've been going over my time limit a lot in the video, so let's try and be. This is what I was expecting. With this is normally what's uh, played against two high. If you want to jump, just jump, and then answer, uh, and that would be much better. Than what you saw in the game. This is a very bad combination. Now, how is this stone robbing the bear? Uh, black can easily slide under and take eye space. So I think White's plan was a little strange. Black played here and is going for eyes first. Tiger's mouth is the vital point, so normally you take the tiger's mouth, but 
Maybe he's worried that if you play this way, he has to play here, and white might ignore him. But I think it's okay. I think so. You can see here, and if white jumps down or threatens to connect or something, you can. I think black's still okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Um, cross cut here. Maybe this cross cut's okay. Let's see what the result is. Okay, so the results. Um. Okay, so I'll get this against this Atari. You're supposed to know. And white connects, you play, and then this result looks good. Uh, actually, white misplayed this Atari. What's that supposed to be? Essentially, sacrifice. This result also looks good for black. So, just nobody here then? Results also fine for black. So, I think the cross cut's okay. I think the cross cut's okay. Uh, ooh, what about this one and then this one? That's probably the best. Yeah, that's probably the best for white. I think that's the way to play for white. All right, so I think the cross cut's possible for black. Uh, white play. So against the cross cut, you almost never Atari, right? The Ataris are usually mistakes more times than they're not. Meaning, normally you go for windmill. So think of the, think of the ting in shape, right? Normally you windmill. You know be. The reason for that is Ataris leave plenty of cuts behind. So if I Atari here and then Atari here, you look at all my cuts. And that's exactly what happened in the game. Look in the game. White Atari and then did this Atari and now all the cuts. So white's not playing the correct shape. Normally you would play a windmill here. Um, but black actually didn't play that and gave white a Panuki, so I think that's a big difference. Um, just go ahead and take. Leave the monkey jump. Don't force white to block. Because uh, if you play this way, then the block is Gote for white. Now you have the monkey jump, so usually you don't push there. So the result's still okay for black, but uh, I think white got a lot more than he should on the right. Mm. Mm, still get the Satari. And you can play here. White takes your eye, then just run away with the tiger's mouth, and if white takes the tiger's mouth, uh, create some Aji first, and then... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Throw in here. Black's not alive. Okay, then you have to run. Sorry, and then run. I thought black could live before, but I guess not with the diagonal, huh? So yeah, just take the tiger's mouth. Atari, and then take the tiger's mouth. So, white gets the eye, black gets the tiger's mouth. And now, two weak groups. So when you have when there's two weak groups, you want to lean on the stronger one. You want to gain shape on the stronger group and let the weak group stay weak. So I would push here and actually fight here uh, in order to make this group weaker and make these two groups strong, but keep this one weak. But instead, Black chose to attack this one. I think this one is a little bit weaker than this one due to the fact that this group, uh, when it lives, this group's going to be very, very weak, and this one's already getting surrounded, right? So compared to here, we could actually even change and do something a little bit better here. Possible to think about. I'm not sure if it's good, but possible. So it's a lot easier to surround this one. This one. So that way, that means that uh, that one's a weaker one. Sorry, right, here a little unnecessary. I think you should take the base. The reason for this is. Pincering once is usually a good idea for a counterattack. When you pincer once, then it's very easy for you to run away because now when you're running away, every move that runs away is also an attack. So by pincering once, you can see that this white group was also weak while you're running. When both were weak, it's easy to run. It's hard for white to, to play any severe attack. But if you don't pincer and you just play something, oops, and you just play something normal, then white can start attacking you very severely and gain point points and profit while attacking. So no, sometimes pincering once is a good uh, way to defend yourself. That way, if he's unsettled your opponents, that way both of you run. So pincering once is sometimes a good defense. Uh, this is broken shape, so it's definitely not good. If anything, I would just give up that one stone and pincer. 
That one stone is not important. Now the question is, is Black alive? Um, no, he's not. So I guess he's, that is important. Meaning, hmm, this move can't be good. So just live. If you want to play on this group, just live. If you want to pincer, pincer. Now if white plays here, now you just run. Because now this stone's not actually part of the game. A lot easier to run. Or run this. But uh, this pincer seems big. If you want to play on this group, though, just live. Don't force your opponent to attack your group. Hmm. Uh, the, yep. Um, Atari first. Atari once. Oops. Atari once. That way you can save the ladder. See, now there's no ladder or anything. But now it's a perfect time to do this. And Black does. Uh, this is really strange because now it's a broken shape, right? Now it's white cutting through two black stones. So it's like perfect shape for white or a perfectly bad shape for black. So just jump. Just play one point jump. No reason. Wait, you're alive. Everyone's alive. Everyone's happy. You're one. And then. Play on the right. It's all possible. Now I can play normal moves, and I think black feels a little bit better because these jumps are really good. But this move's really strange. All right. Oh. Tiger's mouth. Jump. Those two stones aren't important. They're gote. Go ignore and play a big move. Keep. Oh, yeah. Those stones aren't important. So, uh, this game, I don't think there's any major concepts to learn this game. I think there's a lot of attack and defense ideas. So, we can go ahead and stop here and say that the things we can learn from this game is there was a lot of attack and defense ideas, a lot of attack and defense shapes, and... Um, I think that would really, I think this video was really good for learning more attack defense strategies. So remember, surround, uh, touch, pincer, and leaning attack, which one to lean on. Lean on the strong one, not the weak one. And uh, don't forget moves like C1 or B1 because that was determining who gets an eye. So there's a lot of attack and defense stuff in here. So I think uh, I would recommend rewatching this video and pay special attention to the attack and defense. Alrighty then, as always, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next.